Hi again. I hope you found the info presented in the first part useful. Let's continue with part two. Probably the best place to begin is with the most general piece of safety equipment in the lab, the safety cabinet. The safety cabinet contains important supplies for handling a wide range of lab safety issues. You've got simple things like bandages, an inert absorbent for spills and preventing slips, as well as safety labels and warning signs. If you notice that supplies in the safety cabinet are running low, let your instructor know so it can be restocked. This thing here is not a dual drinking fountain for you and that special someone. It's actually a terrible drinking fountain. Actually, it's an eye wash station and its job is to wash your eyes if they've been splashed with chemicals. You know your eyes have been splashed with chemicals if you suddenly notice that they're really burning and hurting badly. If this happens to you or someone around you, get to the eye wash station or help the other person to the station. To use the eye wash, take the hose out of the holder, lean over the sink, open your eyes wide, and then you just squeeze the handle and aim it into your eyes. Then, hold your eyelids open with your fingers and stay there for 15 minutes so the water can wash away the chemicals. Don't worry about flooding the counter or the floor, that's the least of your worries. If someone in your lab has to use the eye wash station, consult with your instructor about calling the environmental health and safety folks, or even 911 if the situation is serious enough. Every lab has a familiar red fire extinguisher in it. They might be in different places in each lab, so be sure you know where the nearest one is when you come into lab. However, if there's a fire in your lab and you've never used a fire extinguisher before, do not pick that moment to learn how to use one. Leave that to someone who knows what they're doing. Instead, you should just follow the directions given to you by your instructor and not just run out of the lab screaming like a crazy person. If it's necessary, stop screaming long enough to pull the fire alarm as you run past it. This is a biological safety hood. It's basically a powerful air cleaner and its job is to safely vent dangerous or smoky emissions. It's especially useful for dealing with emissions in lab classes that take place after lunch. To use the hood, raise the glass door to the stop point, and then put your chemicals inside. This will allow the vent to do its job. A few more safety tips about hoods. First, never put your head inside the fume hood when chemicals are present. That sort of defeats the purpose, doesn't it? Next, don't use the hood interior as a writing desk. Finally, tell your instructor about any defective hood, whether the vent isn't working or the glass door just doesn't lower far enough or if it's just broken in some way. A functioning hood is crucial for lab safety. When working with hazardous chemicals that can injure your eyes or potentially light you on fire, a working emergency shower must be no more than 10 seconds away. Don't block access to the shower and keep the pathway clear at all times. If you are badly splashed with hazardous chemicals, get to the shower quickly. To turn on the shower, pull this handle here, stay in the water for at least 15 minutes and remove any contaminated clothing. Now is not the time for modesty. Don't worry about flooding in the floor. There's no drain, but that's not really a big deal. Your health or that of the injured person is way more important. To turn off the shower, push the handle all the way up. Even though we have to keep the door to our lab closed during lab sessions, we can still hear emergency alarms since they also sound inside the lab. If the alarm sounds or instructor orders everyone to evacuate the lab because of an emergency, get out fast. Turn off Bunsen burners or other devices if there's time, but leave your backpack and other items. As you evacuate the building, don't take the elevator, and be sure to help your fellow students who might need assistance going downstairs. Once you're outside, everyone must get 200 feet away from the building and stay off the sidewalks and driveways. Instead, find a comfortable spot in the grass, perhaps under a large tree like this one, and relax, because you're probably going to be here for a while. Perhaps someone can pull out a guitar and lead a rousing sing-along. We didn't die in a rocky today, hey, hey. Hey, good job, man. You're done with training, and I'm sure that arm will be fine. Well, I'm back in lab after that little evacuation. There was a report of zombies feeding on brains in the study area down the hall. Turns out it was just some older faculty members eating spaghetti with marinara sauce. Anyway, I hope you found the safety tutorial informative and fun. Once you've correctly answered all the questions on the quiz, the software will automatically transmit your information to your instructor, and you'll be clear to attend lab. So, have a good semester, and make sure you put your back into it.